What does it mean to say that two lines are parallel? You might have heard phrases like, two lines that will never meet, but couldn't I say that about these lines? Perhaps it's two straight lines that will never meet, but again, I can have two lines that will never meet because they're short, or in 3D space, I can have lines that are infinitely long and would never meet, but I probably wouldn't think of them as parallel. And then speaking of 3D space, I can imagine having two planes that are parallel. So maybe the term parallel doesn't have to be about lines at all. I've also heard people say it's like train tracks, which is great for building my intuition about the sense of what parallel is, but it doesn't necessarily give me a concise and unambiguous definition that I could use to judge two lines as being parallel or not. When I do a web search, while I still get this parallel lines never meet phrase, I see that this is just one part of the definition. And I can use this notion of two things remaining the same distance apart to get a better feel for how this applies to lines in space, planes in space, or even imaginary latitude lines around the Earth. So when we're thinking about mathematical terminology and definitions, it's useful to think about which properties are really essential to the definition, and then which properties are true but don't give us the full picture, and which properties might be true but might be more of a consequence of the essential ones. When talking about shapes and their properties, we have a number of important terms, like parallel, which can help us accurately and concisely describe them, even if it's a little more work in the beginning having to learn them. Firstly, what makes up a shape? We have lines, which can also be referred to as edges. A point where two lines meet is called a vertex, or vertices for the plural, and we can say a shape that's drawn on a flat surface is two-dimensional or planar. So a triangle is a planar shape with straight lines, three vertices, and three edges. So then, is this a triangle? How about this? And this one? If the lines defining a shape all connect without loose ends, we say that the shape is closed. And then we can also think of shapes with lines which cross over. In the context of shapes, we say that these are complex, while shapes without intersecting lines are called simple. Then what about when we talk about particular features of shapes? Of course, we have angles, but what is an angle? I'm pretty sure I know where to find them. They're found at the vertices, but the vertex isn't the same as an angle. Actually, I can have angles between lines which don't even share a vertex. Like weight and length, an angle is a measure of something. In this case, it's a measure of how much turn you need to get from the orientation of one line to another. And the units we'll measure this turn in is degrees, where we say that 360 degrees is a complete revolution. Angles can be acute if they're less than 90 degrees, obtuse if they're between 90 and 180, and then a right angle is exactly 90 degrees, and a straight line is exactly 180 degrees. Then any angle between 180 and 360 degrees is called a reflex angle. Then when it comes to sides, clearly we can have curved or straight sides, but we often need to refer to sides in terms of their relationship to others. Two sides are adjacent to one another if they share a vertex, and then we'd often say that sides like these two are opposite one another. However, it gets a bit more tricky if our shapes have many sides, or even an odd number of sides. Some other special terms we have in this topic can be used to characterise shapes. A polygon, which is the star of our show this week, is a simple and closed planar shape constructed from straight lines. So a triangle is a type of polygon, but a circle isn't, and neither are these shapes. Polygons can be convex or concave. We say a shape is convex if any two points inside that shape would be connected by a line which stays entirely inside the shape. In this case, it amounts to there being no reflex angles inside the shape. 
But the term convex can apply to other areas of mathematics too. And so the description involving the two points and a line actually is a better way of thinking about it in order to prime our intuition for further studies. If a shape is not convex, we say it's concave. I usually remember this by thinking of a concave shape as something which has sides that have caved in. Then the most important term for us this week, aside from polygons, is the idea of a shape being regular. This is very different to our everyday use of the term regular. It doesn't mean normal or standard, just like complex and simple before didn't mean complicated and easy. The term regular, when applied to polygons, and remember that simple and closed planar shapes constructed from straight lines, means that all the internal angles are the same and all the sides are of equal length. If a shape isn't regular, we can say it's irregular, but again, this doesn't necessarily mean strange or odd. A rectangle, for example, a very sensible shape, doesn't necessarily have equal side lengths, so it would be an example of an irregular four-sided polygon. Many of the specific terms in this topic have usage outside of mathematics. We can think about parallel universes, or someone having unparalleled ability in sports, and someone can make an acute or obtuse point during an argument. In many cases, it's worth thinking about how that meaning differs, or whether the meaning in everyday contexts is actually derived from the specific meaning in mathematics.